All right, so today we have a game. Well, maybe it's a game. It's game-like, and this game-like game that's possibly not a game is Coaster, published by Walt Freakin' Disney Computer Software Incorporated in 1993. Apparently we are in for quite a wild time, or at least an experience that merits an agape mouth. Coaster, take the ultimate scream test. Not really sure why you would want to, but basically the back of the box here is telling you that this piece of software is worth your dollar or 50 through words that try way too hard to rhyme. It's your dream and your scheme, so relax, sit back and scream. Uh, I could write better rhymes than this when I'm standing over the toilet taking a piss. Apparently, the game wasn't actually developed by Disney. It was programmed by Dan Duncalf, and there was some involvement from people who worked on previous Disney titles like Stunt Island. The development team called themselves CTG, which stands for Code To Go. A bit of an odd name for a game development studio, kind of like saying their programming is the equivalent of carry out food at a fast food restaurant. Am I getting McDonald's quality software here or what? Inside the box, you get the game on a single three and a half inch high density floppy disk, a rather lengthy and detailed manual with man who never stops screaming on the front once again. There's also some other crap in here, notably a slip for the Disney sound source. This is just advertising the availability of the DSS, one of the sound devices supported by Coaster. It was essentially a Disney branded, slightly enhanced Kovacs speech thing and very few games supported it. And one more thing to note, I really had never heard of this game before I happened to see an ad for it in the catalog of my copy of Stunt Island, and that's largely to do with the name of the game itself. I mean, Coaster? Really? Just Coaster? Try searching for a PC game named Coaster, and you're going to get a hundred different results, and almost none of them are going to be about this game. It's just way too generic of a game name to stand out at all. That'd be like naming Sonic the Hedgehog Platformer or your movie, Cars. Oh, <laughs> uh. The game starts off with an intro cinematic with very overly bubbly music that sounds like something out of my nightmares. Overlaid on top of imagery of people that look like they would never ride roller coasters riding roller coasters. And the logo of the game three different times just in case you forgot what it is you have actually installed and are currently playing. Next you've got a menu screen which is actually nicely drawn and I guess I should expect no less from a Disney game. Point at stuff with your mouse and then see whatever happens to show up on the computer monitor that will let you know what you are clicking on. The tablet on the desktop lets you design a roller coaster, the window or the door will let you ride a roller coaster, and the nice looking clone tower PC to the left will quit the game and allow you to return to the always exciting MS-DOS prompt. There are some other neat little things just kind of hanging around here but they don't do anything at all. Maybe I've played too many games by Humongous, but I thought clicking on this lamp or the coffee cup could at least do some cheesy little animation, or Mickey Mouse sitting on the trash can or whatever the frick it is over there by the door, you know, maybe he could like do jumping jacks and flip me off or something. That would be cool, but nothing happens. Now let's just go into design a coaster, which is really the meat of the game simulation program. This will allow you to either choose a pre-made roller coaster or create a new one entirely through a rather CAD-like interface. And this is one of the earliest games I can think of that allows you to do this with roller coasters. Yeah, sure, there were CAD things where you could create your own 3D roller coasters or whatever, but this one puts it into an interface which actually kind of makes sense and allows you to tweak some really interesting things like the acceleration, the upstops, the friction, and even the gravity. There are also two track types to choose from, steel and magic. Steel coasters make sense. I mean, they're coasters made of steel. And magic ones just basically are the same exact thing, except that they don't have any supports at all. They just float there by use of magic. However, I do not believe in magic in a young girl's heart, so I choose steel tracks most often. There are some limitations in steepness and banking that you can get around by using an external track editor such as DC Edit. Now, this program only works in Windows, oddly enough, so you'll have to exit your DOS environment to do this. 
Once you have finished creating or editing your track to your track editing heart's content, you can return to the menu and go to Ride a Coaster mode. This will greet you with another screen and another short musical ditty, as well as giving you your first glimpse at the only people to appear in Disney's coaster, and that is these six dudes and dudettes, sporting an impressive lack of facial features and an impressive selection of early 90s apparel. These are your evaluators, and if you go to the profiles section, you can see each person up close and what it is they're looking for, their basic personality types. In theory, this is supposed to let you know what kind of experience they're going to be looking for when riding your roller coaster, which is interesting because apparently Disney wants you to go on stereotypes here and just kind of assume what each kind of person is going to want to experience. I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I mean, this is Disney after all, you know, stereotypes, that's like their bread and butter. Back at the menu, you can go to the file menu and choose to open any roller coaster that happens to be installed on your hard drive. Now, these can be any that you have created or edited or the ones that come pre-installed with the game, some of which are based on real roller coasters like the Matterhorn Screamer, for instance, or you could just download other people's creations from the internet. Choose a roller coaster, choose ride, and off you go. Hands and arms in the car, please. Okay, I thought I was in a roller coaster game, not a recreation of the flight scenes from Top Gun. Ah, uh, wait, never mind, this is a Disney roller coaster, so it's hardcore. Along the bottom of the screen from left to right, you have the brakes, this green radar thing which shows you your G-forces, a timer which shows you how long each ride is, an on and off button, a speedometer in miles per hour, and an odometer showing how far you've gone, and on the right you have a thrust button. So yeah, you get NOS on a roller coaster. A fact that would normally make me raise an eyebrow, but then I remembered this is a 90s game, and that's just how it went. Pressing spacebar starts the roller coaster ride, and you can just let the coaster do its thing, but that's not very exciting, so you can press the right mouse button to activate the thrust, which is, uh, very... <laughs> yeah, you can make roller coasters that go like 200 miles per hour with the thrust enabled. The speedometer just kind of keeps going around and around. You're then shown a high score screen of the top eight roller coasters that have been played, these scores come from the evaluator's overall total score given to that roller coaster ride. And you can go back into the evaluation screen and check the rating to see... Oh, good! Ugh! What in the world? What happened to their faces? Ugh, and you can click on them and they twitch and stuff. Ugh. So clicking on each evaluator will not only make them twitch like a dead corpse, it will provide their opinion on what they felt during the roller coaster ride, which is usually something slightly clever pertaining to their very one-sided personality. Really though, this is a completely pointless part of Disney's coaster because all you've really got to do is make your coaster go extremely fast and they'll be happy. Just make sure that the coaster doesn't fly off the tracks and you'll be good. And yes, your coaster can fly off the rails, which is made especially doable if you remove things like brakes and the upstops. In fact, the evaluators will often choose not to ride the coaster at all if you remove those, instead opting for a crash test dummy. I guess that's a way for them to get around showing these people dying, which really would have added a whole new dimension to the game and I think would have been very welcome. I mean, you can do that in uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon and other stuff like that. It was always great to see the roller coasters fly off the rails onto the ground and watch all the little people splat everywhere. You've got those other things to screw around with too, like the acceleration and the different gravity types. Moon gravity, which is less gravity, and Jupiter gravity, which is a lot more. But they're not nearly as exciting as they sound. Most of the time, you're just going to get a super fast roller coaster that either flies straight off the rails or looks as fast as any other roller coaster and makes the evaluators cream their pants in elation. The only other thing you can really do is go into the signature menu to get some more detailed stats of your roller coaster. I don't really care. The main attraction here for me is being able to design and ride roller coasters in a kind of 3D looking environment, which technically was very impressive for 1993. And still, as a curiosity, it's pretty cool today just seeing an older DOS game that does this. But really, there's tons of games that have come out since then that have done this a whole lot better. And it's mainly because of this fact that Disney's coaster comes to a halt. 
Sure, it's got some humor here and there with the distorted faces, but that's really about it. That's kind of the only thing that really sets this apart from any other roller coaster simulator. What it does, it does well. There's nothing really wrong with Disney's coaster, but there's no real game here. There's no real substance beyond being able to make a roller coaster. You can't change the scenery. There's no amusement park to put it in. You can't let visitors on there. All you have is these evaluators, which never change. And sure, maybe it's not supposed to really be a game and have any of these features, and as a coaster designer, it's not too bad, but again, it's been surpassed by the No Limits Coaster series and such. What it comes down to is that nowadays, it's a coffee table game. It's something you just kind of point out every now and then and say, hey, this was interesting for the time, but otherwise, you know, whatever. So yeah, check out Disney's Coaster if you happen to run across it. But otherwise, I feel no need to recommend it past that initial curiosity at all. Whoa, boy!